Hi everyone, let's do one last exercise with parsing, and this is going to be parsing of a language here from Earth, Tagalog from the Philippines. Tagalog is a beautiful language, and it is much, much more complicated and interesting than just the four examples that I'm going to show you here. But these examples are have a structure that is fairly similar to the structure of Klingon, which we studied in the last video. So my recommendation for the practice would be for you to download the um, CFG Tagalog file, the one that's not solved. Um, you can work with it either on directly on Python or as a Jupyter Notebook. And I'm going to do the exercise together with you. So I will tell you some characteristics of the sentences. Uh, ask you to pause the video and try to figure it out yourself, and then I'm going to solve it so that we can work on these examples together. Same as with Klingon, you have a PDF that has Tagalog exercise, it has four sentences, and the words for each of them. So the first sentence we have here is Dumatin uh, Hanglalaki, the man has arrived. As you can see, the verb comes first, Dumatin. Then the noun phrase, ang lalaki, the man. Having that, I will let's now proceed to the code. So let me load NLTK. This is the same function for the parsing that we've been doing. This is my Tagalog grammar, which has nothing right now. I'm going to run the brackets variable. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we have the first sentence here. The man has arrived. Dumating ang lalaki. Dumating is a verb, ang is a determiner, and lalaki is a noun. So based on what we've done so far with English and Klingon, what would you need to put in here to parse this sentence? You're going to need some non-terminals and then some terminals that have these words. Try to fill this in and then run this to see if you get a parse. Um, please pause the video. One, two, three, four, five. Hi, so the first thing we're going to need is probably the structure of the sentence, which is a verb phrase, because the verb comes first, tumating, and then the noun phrase, ahlalaki. Um, we are probably gonna need a verb phrase, which in this case is just a verb, dumating, and we're going to need a noun phrase, which is a determiner, ang, and then a noun for man, lalaki. We have here a uh, verb, uh, for example, dumating has arrived, then nouns, um, lalaki, man, and a determiner, ang. These are all nice and aligned. Run it, and hopefully, we get a parse. I'm going to copy this here. And there we go. Dumating alalaki has arrived the man. So, who is doing uh, has arrived? Who is doing the VP? The sister note, and P, alalaki, the man. What is alalaki doing? The man? It's sister note, VP, Dumatin. The man has arrived. All right, let's move this downstairs. And here we have the second sentence. Juan plays basketball. Nag basketball si Juan. What would you need to do to modify this CFG grammar so that it can parse this sentence? And again, nag basketball is a verb, C is a determiner similar to the, and Juan is just a noun. So please modify this grammar, run it, and then uh, try to um, get the parse for this one. Please pause the video. So let's see. We have Nag Basketball Si Juan. This is a verb, which is just one, a verbal phrase, which we already have, and a noun phrase, which we already have. 
then this verbal phrase is just composed of one verb, v, and then this noun phrase is composed of the determiner, c, and the noun, one. So we already have the non-terminal structure. Let's just add our terminals. Nag basketball, one, c. Let's run it, and hopefully we get a parse. Mm -hmm. So there we go. This has a sentence that has a verbal phrase with a verb, nag basketball, to, uh, to play basketball, uh, to, to be playing basketball. It has a noun phrase with a determiner, C, and a noun, Juan. So Juan plays basketball. Who is doing nag basketball? The VP, the sister of the VP, the NP, C, Juan. Juan is playing basketball. What is Juan doing? Uh, the NP, let's look at the sister the, uh, of the NP, the VP, not basketball. Juan is playing basketball. And this is the structure that we get. So here we have our Tagalog grammar. Let's go to our third example. I wrote, sumulat ako. So sumulat is the verb I wrote, and ako is I. It's a pronoun, really, but let's think of it as a noun for the sake of the exercise. So how would you need to modify this CFG so that it can parse the sentence sumulatako? I wrote. Go ahead and give it a try. Please pause the video. Welcome back. Let's see. So sumulatako has a verbal phrase for the verb to uh, wrote and we already have a verbal phrase and a noun phrase a call so we have the noun phrase here then the verbal phrase is composed of just a verb and we're good then the noun phrase is composed of ooh, we need something here because we have only had noun phrases that are determiner noun so we need a noun phrase that will accept just a noun so we need to add the we're calling a noun here ako, and which again is a pronoun but it functions in the same positions as a noun that's why we are subsuming it into a noun and we need to add the verb sumulat let's see we run that one and then we get a parse so we have a sentence that has a vp with which has a verb sumulat and an NP that has a, ne and then a noun, a call. So, wrote I. If we look at the MP, I. Who, what did the NP do? With, let's look at its sister note, the VP, sumulat. I wrote. Who did the writing? Let's look at the VP and its sister note, NP. I did the writing. Mm -hmm. So our grammar is working well. Now the next one, the last one for this exercise, is quite a challenge. The it's the sentence, um, The man gave the woman a book. And we have several things here. Nakbigai is, uh -huh. Nakbigai is the verb gave. Nang is a determiner. It's similar to the word the. Libro is book. Sa is the preposition to. So gave the book to. Babai is woman. Gave the book to woman. And then Ahlalaki, the man. So this is going to be your verbal phrase. Gave the book to woman. And the subject is the man. Ahlalaki. And it makes sense because what did the man do? Gave the book to woman. Who gave the book to woman? The man, the subject of the sentence. So you're going to need to implement a few things here. Now we have something called prepositions here that you're going to need to implement. Uh, we have new determiners. We have 
um, potentially another structure for VPs. So go ahead and give it a try. Try to modify this the CFG grammar of Tagalog so that it can parse this sentence. Obviously, I hope you paused the video. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Let's make some modifications. So, nakbigay nak libro sa We are we have a sentence that has a verb phrase here and a noun phrase here. So we already have a sentence that is verb phrase, noun phrase. We are going to need a new type of verb phrase because we only had verb. So we're going to need another verb phrase that takes a verb, a noun phrase for the direct object, the book, and a prepositional phrase for the for who's the beneficiary of the action, the woman. We are going to need to define a prepositional phrase. The prepositional phrase is a preposition and a noun phrase because it's to woman. Mm, what do we need to do? Well, we need to get the uh, terminals for this verb phrase. So we need the verb nak be guy. We are going to need the N here, which is part of an NP, the book. So it's a determiner. Nang. Libro is a noun. Mm -hmm. We are going to then need to figure out what to do with sababai. Sababai is the prepositional phrase, which has the preposition sa and the noun babai. So let's create a new kind of non terminal. Uh -huh. called a preposition. Wait. And this is going to be sa. And we need to add the noun, bye bye, woman, to the nouns. So gave the book, the book to woman. the man and we already have anklalaki within our words so let's see let's run it and hopefully oh it parsed look it's a very nice parse let's paste it here make sure that we can see it so who did the action of the sentence the np anklalaki the man what is the action of the sentence? Gave the book to the woman. What is the main action of the sentence? The verb. Gave. What was given? The book. To whom was it given? To woman. Who performed the action of gave the book to the woman? The man. Lalaki. So again, our parse... Um, helps us, uh, it builds a lot of structure into the sentence, which allows us to see relationships like who did what, for whom, and to what thing. That is what we're trying to do parsing. And as you can see, the parsing rules are different for every language, but in general, these rules can help us describe any human language. In the next couple of videos, we're going to look at um, structures called tree banks, which are large collections of parsed sentences, and how we can use those to then le learn how to parse more sentences and extract valuable information from them.